Hello, everyone. It is another episode of Masks Off, and I'm Tia. And I'm Kim. And we're super excited to have you here. Today, we thought it would be really important and helpful to talk about how when we're on this journey of life and awakening and coming back to ourselves or authenticity, all of that is that it, you've heard us say this before, that it's a process and it takes time. And we just wanted to dive in a little more with that. And so the quote today is from Mariska Hargitay, healing takes time and asking for help is a courageous step. And the reason we chose that quote for today is because Again, you've heard us say this before, and it has been proven time and time again for both Kim and myself, that it is a journey, it does take time, and it is a solo journey, but ultimately it is a journey we take with others. Because so often when we get stuck in the muck, we get stuck in that brain fog, which we talked about in an earlier episode, Sometimes we need a little help, a little reflection, a little guidance from another to help us begin to have that fog clear and have a little more clarity and trust. Because when we're there, especially if we have been on this path for a while, oftentimes we can become critical of ourselves and be like, geez, you know better. Why are we, why am I stuck here again? What's going on? I should, I should know better. But then when we reach out and we get that support from another person that we know has our back. They remind us of our light within us that we can't always see and that it's okay to just be stuck for a little while. And so then, then what's next and what's next? And to know, we talk about it in our True North class, it's people who are our lantern, you know, who is, helps us shine brighter. And so that's, that's kind of what we thought we'd talk about today. Kim, what did you wanna add? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, you're speaking to the choir because, you know, I, I have been in the muck and, but it's, it, it, as I was saying to you earlier, it's great that I am in the muck because Mm -hmm. as I'm in it and going through it, one, I can more identify with what others are going through. And then I can share my experience, strength, and hope when I'm no longer in the muck, because I know that this too shall pass because everything does pass, right? But here's the thing where I love what you just said, and it was helpful that when we are on a path to healing or this path to awakening, whatever, evolving, changing, there is, there can be, there can be this expectation that I should no longer stumble and fall over boulders, boulders being life or challenges or what I should just know better because I have all this information. I've learned all this stuff. Why am I feeling like a spiritual infant again? You know, (laughs) I love that spiritual infant. (laughs) Yes. I feel like such an infant, like I was just born, but, and we talk about one of our very first masks that we talked about in masks soft was the perfectionist mask. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, what's coming up is that I'm saying I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Um, even from the standpoint of my recovery with COVID and where I'm at physically in my workouts, Mm -hmm. I'm still like saying to myself, when I go for a run or I'm doing the Peloton, if I'm not at the cardio level that I was at prior to COVID, I'm like beating myself up. Mm. It's like, what the heck, you know? And it's only because of the place that I'm in, right? right? So when you get stuck in the muck, that it is often followed with stinking thinking, you know? And I have <laughs> some so real, <laughs> I do, I have stinking thinking. And it's just like a domino effect. Honestly, it's like, I start, excuse me. I start, you know, with one negative thought. Yeah. And then it's, it, we, it's a snowball effect. It's like, wow, my whole head. Right. So, and what I find interesting about what you said too, in the beginning about reaching out is that it's such an interesting phenomenon, how much I don't want to reach out. Mm 
how hard it is. Can I tell you how hard it is yeah. when I'm in this space to reach out and go grab for a lifeline? So healing takes time. Asking for help is a courageous step. It sure is because I'm finding myself not having the courage and that, and, and it's an, and it comes from an inner child wound of my needs are not important. My mm-hmm. needs are not as important as others. Thus, when I was just reading that reading to you yeah, a few minutes ago, before we started recording was where that came from because, and I know many listeners out there may relate to this putting other people's needs ahead of our own. Mm -hmm. And I I don't want to say all, I'm just somewhat generalizing when I say oftentimes it can be women, but not always, you know, it's not always women, but you do see that a lot where we're just putting other, anyone really who doesn't feel worthy enough to reach out and say, Hey, I need help. Can you help me? Right. And it's hard. It's hard. It's not even just about, it it is that it is definitely that about thinking my needs are not worthy and valuable, but it's also being very vulnerable, right? Big time. Very vulnerable. We talked about going in the arena in one of our earlier episodes. Yeah. So stepping into the arena and that Teddy Roosevelt quote about how courageous it takes to go in and and step in and say, like, I'm in a really dark space. I am sinking and drowning in this muddy water. I can't see anything. Can you freaking send me a lifeline? Like that, who does that? It's, I mean, you know what I mean? Who does? (laughs) It's hard. Right. Right. It's really hard. And especially to actually physically reach out and ask for that you know it's one thing when they show up and it it becomes natural and then it's like oh I did need this I didn't realize I needed it but to actually be like hey I'm gonna pick up the phone and call or text like hey you got a minute yeah I need a little support I know but then remembering too it's really hard but I mean I'm being on the other side of the coin when I get a call from someone or a text like hey I'm really struggling you know, or even just with my clients or friends, anybody, it's like, it's such a beautiful gift that we do give to another, like, Hey, I trust you enough. I need your help. You know, we take away that opportunity to give and receive. It's so hard to receive and it's really easy to give, but we have to remember that people who want to support and are your people on your lantern that help shine help you shine bright want yes. to support you and knowing people on this path too like if they don't have the bandwidth be like I'm gonna support you but I can't do it right now I'm gonna can we talk like in four hours or tomorrow knowing yes because I think that's another important piece sometimes we feel like we're a burden to another person totally totally then like the tr- our true people like yeah. At least for me personally, if someone, I reach out and they're like, I am, I'm in the muck myself, you know? So sometimes yeah. it, actually it can be helpful for two people in the muck to come together. <laughs> if I will say, if they're in a space where they can do that, because sometimes it can actually make it worse if people, right. You don't want to start to drown like the quicksand and right. Like I'm taking you with me. We're going down, <laughs> both going down, <laughs> but knowing like, it's okay to show up for somebody and be like, okay, this is all I've got right now. I love you. And I'm going to check in on you tomorrow. Yeah. Um, But ultimately, and I think, you know, we were talking about this too, of, you know, we we always have little things in the works for everybody. Um, But one of the things in the works we have is this um, group coaching idea and support. And so knowing like, it's not to dismiss that you, when you need support, you need support and learning how to ask for it. But sometimes we need that practice and having groups and circles and all those opportunities teaches us like, oh, it's not so scary after all. I'm not alone. There are people for me. And then you can learn how to ask in the moment more so when you actually need it. Um, And if you can't, when you have that ongoing support, it's like, okay, no, I'm talking to everybody in a week. I can hold out. I can hold yes. out, I can make it, I have that lifeline, it's coming. 
and knowing that That's so it's important. really important to still reach out when you need support. And sometimes it's just someone to listen or be, I mean, I, I've sat on the phone with people, with friends, and it's like, they talk and then we have like five minutes of quiet. <laughs> mm. That's all we need. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love how, well, and that was great that you um, did mention that we're going to, you know, that we're putting together a little something because I think it's going to be so amazing and awesome. And I truly personally love any kind of groups that I go to. And I really, when I do go to groups, I don't have a problem then reaching out and because yeah. that's what the purpose is. Or if I'm talking right. to my coach and I know, like, if I know I have a coaching call coming up, like I'm paying for that, or that's mm -hmm. what the purpose is for that hour. Or if I'm going to a group thing, I don't have a problem in those instances reaching out. It's mm -hmm. more the other stuff that you talked about, like calling someone and saying, you know, and oh, well, what if they're in the middle of something, you know, it's right. that imposing and that burden. And that's where I said, sometimes um, we can come from a space of, well, my needs are not yes. as important as your needs are. So, and yeah. that's, that's just very typical childhood growing up kind of dysfunctional kind of things that, mm -hmm. that can be imprinted in our subconscious minds when we're very young. Definitely. Um, there, you know, so many people in our generation, generations before, just so many people in general do suffer from some level of abandonment. Mm -hmm. And that's where that comes from. Emotional, it can be emotional, spiritual, or physical abandonment can lead to a child feeling I'm not worthy, right? What I need, what I need and want in this moment is not important and valuable. And I'm not worthy because just, even if it's a simple thing, like if a mom has four or five kids under the age of five, right. And can't give each child. Like I always said, I would never have like a big family because I just knew my bandwidth and I knew I wouldn't I didn't think that I could give each child what each child needed. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and none of this is intentional, but you can see very easily how that could happen and how that can happen in childhood. And then fast forward to adulthood, you still attach that meaning interpretation. My needs and wants are not as important right. as because my siblings were more important or whatever, whatever the situation is. Right. So that's why then asking, taking that courageous step and asking for help can be tricky for many. And so totally. that's why I think it's really good. You and I are talking about this and bringing this up because how many of us are in the muck from, we're all in the muck from time to time. Totally. No one is on a mountaintop all the time. No, no one is, even no. if they proclaim to be on the mountaintop. I don't care. Everybody is in a valley or in the muck at some point in time. Totally. You just may not be stuck there as long, or you may be stuck very long and are too stoic to admit yeah, it. Exactly. You know, like, oh, someone's going to think less of me or, oh, I can't, I have to be strong for everyone else. This yes. Is, if I'm not, then what happens? Right. Exactly. I know. So what are your thoughts on it or your experiences with that reaching out for help? Oh, it's definitely not my strong point. <laughs> I will say though, I have gotten better. There have been times where I have been like struggling, struggling yeah. right now. I mean, we talked, what was it? I know we talked yesterday because we recorded was, another episode yeah. yesterday, but I think we chatted at some point before that. I can't remember, but just like, whew, things are, things are mucky. Yeah. Right now, you know, and, and probably even a year ago, two years ago, I would never have said that to you. Yeah. I would have hidden it. Like things, are, you know, you know, things are, they're going. Yeah. I mean, life's life. Right. I would have just been like, yeah, life's life, you know, ups and downs, but I wouldn't have actually been like hmm, a little yeah, overwhelmed right cool. now. Yeah. You know, so I take that as a win. <laughs> 
not that we somewhere. have to be like a you know it's not either or but it's that yeah it's progress and reaching out is really hard or even even if we don't reach out just actually on asking or answering honestly of like you know it's, it's here I'm stuck that's okay and I can tell you why I'm stuck and what's going yeah. on and you can shine a light or show something that I'm missing you know or a perception that I might need to see and that's the beauty because when we try to do this healing work fully alone we cannot see our blind spots and totally. that's why they're blind spots because we have yeah. not uncovered them yet whether we have consciously chosen not to uncover them or not or we literally have no idea they exist so when we have community we have our people we have our support system in place particularly those who are doing this work yeah because they can see things we don't see and so we need that to heal another level and how many times in just even the last couple of months have I had an issue going on for me and I said to you okay Tia here's the deal and I would say I'm trying to like deconstruct I'm trying to turn the spotlight on myself tell me if I'm missing anything right like I really yeah. honestly want to know like tell me if I right do, where's my blind spot? Tell me if I've missed something. Mm -hmm. Am I being in my in tunnel vision on this? Right. And, and you'll let me know, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think we do have that kind of open and honest conversation that way. It's and so I helpful. like what it, it is really helpful for me. I, I don't, how's it going to serve me if you just tell me what I want to hear, exactly. you know? <laughs> exactly. Tell me like, oh, you're right all the time. No, I'm not. You know, I, I know is. that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And that's just another mask, right? Who yes. are not wanting to dive in and figure out because I got to be right all the time. And I don't want people mm. to see my weakness. And yeah. And I think too, it's also helpful, you know, am I missing anything? You know, because we've talked about this. It's like going within, going within. Well, sometimes there isn't anything there. Yeah. Sometimes we actually have uncovered it, it for that specific situation in that yes. moment. And sometimes it's like, wow, I'm like thinking there's more to it, but actually I just need to accept that this is what it is. And that's where that person is. And yeah, that, yes, we can have arrows thrown at us. And, what, and sometimes the person is just being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and they're projecting on you and we're looking for something within us. And, and actually there may not be anything there, there for that be. specific situation. There's always something. Right. But we can with this healing process and work, sometimes we can start to try to find things, go on that searching yes. mode. And we're actually making a mountain out of a molehill when really it's like, oh, yes. my it's, it may be a flavor, but I've already healed that. And it's just reminding me, it doesn't have to be bigger and deeper and buried underneath some hidden spot in me. Cause That's I noticed entirely... I have done that before. Yeah, that me too. I totally have. And recently. So that's a really good point that you bring in. Yeah. So this, you know, this was interesting, very impromptu for us to record right now, not our yeah. normal day or normal time, but so glad that we did because this was coming up, you know, yeah. this, and it just goes with um, one of our previous podcasts. It does. So, it does. And it's something you and I both experience personally and with people we support so we yes. felt that's why we really wanted to hit record because it's something that will come up again and again and again until the day this body leaves this earth <laughs> it it will and I'll, I'll just i'll just um end by saying how you know how important it is to reach out and how hard it can be yes um, particularly, you know, for me at times is that the coach that I'm working with, she said, when I was telling her, you know, this space, this muck, mucky water that I've been in, she said, I want you to, I need you to, <laughs> when you're feeling like crappy, whatever, just send me an email Yep. and say, I don't want to do this, but you're making me do this. <laughs> And we don't even have to have a conversation about it, but exactly. I will just hold space, energetic space for you. Totally. And I need for you to just reach out. And can I tell you that from the day she told me to do that, it took me a good four or five days 
before I would even do that. And then when, and I knew I wasn't even really imposing because she didn't really have to respond back. She right. did a quick, you know, couple of lines, which yeah. was fine. But even that, I was like so hard for me to send wow. a stinking email just to say, I don't want to do this. I'm in this space. Just letting you know, period. <laughs> but you did it. I did it. So I, so Huge. I, it was the first courageous step. I did do that. And, you know, it did help to do that, knowing mm-hmm. that I reached out when, and I think why I'm saying it again and underscoring it is because sometimes you know, we can get into a deep and dark place. And it's so important to not, our minds can really go into a deep, deep rabbit hole. Totally. Right. That's very normal, very natural. It can happen, but it can become deeper and more entrenched if we just keep spiraling in our minds. Yes. And when you take the courageous step to reach out, that, that can sometimes prevent us from going deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes. And I love that you brought that up because it doesn't always mean we get out of it. It does not. I'm not out of it yet. Yeah. So just to be clear for people listening is sometimes yes. it helps get you out. Yeah. Sometimes right away, maybe in a few days, sometimes yes. it doesn't, you just have to stay in this stuck place for a while. And I, when yes. I work with people too, it's like, you might be stuck for a while and it's yes. okay. Nothing's wrong with you. Yes. But the reason I want to bring that up is you're still stuck there, but you know, you're not stuck alone. Yes. That's the That's difference. Why I said, yes. Yeah. Cause like you said, you're still there, but it, right. it doesn't, I mean, I, I'll ask you, does it feel as dark? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I feel like I'm still kind of spinning, mm-hmm. but I'm not going deeper, deeper, deeper. Like I just That's know, and I feel, and I do feel this comfort of, cause she said, it's going to be okay. And I do know that this too shall pass. And so mm-hmm. it just gives me a little more, like if I'm, let's say if I'm in a rabbit hole in a dirt hole, literally, yeah. let's just say, I feel like now I have something to hold onto on the side so that I don't keep going down into the abyss. I have something to kind of grab onto. Someone's holding space for me and this too shall pass and it's going to be okay. And that is such an amazing thing like holding space people don't if they've never experienced true space holding yeah it is honestly I feel personally one of the biggest gifts yeah to give and to receive there's nothing like it nothing to be actually fully seen and heard and someone's isn't running away when you're in that icky space (laughs) You don't have to do anything other than do that. Just be there. So whether perfect. it's physically or energetically, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. I mean, heck, we haven't seen each other in almost two years. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Exactly. It'll be two years in October. Yeah. yeah. So that's such a good way to end is to just, you know, remind, remind our listeners to find yeah. that lifeline you know, it do, healing does take time and just to find, find a lifeline. Totally. So I'm going to hold space for you. That's right. And to be gentle. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm so glad we got on. Thank you, Thank you. so much for listening, everybody. This was just such a great impromptu recording and stay tuned for more. Yes. Have a good day. Bye.